Are you looking for alternative ways of making progress on your pieces rather than just slowing them right down as we're quite often advised to do? Well, stay tuned for some ideas of how you can mix things up a little bit and add other things to this type of practice to make progress faster. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. This is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anyone who loves a piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first visit here, then please do consider subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know that I'm a member of a number of online piano related groups. And I find these really rewarding and very valuable places to get advice and information on how to practice, how to play things, and all other things piano related. However, I do admit that sometimes I get a little frustrated when people are asking for advice on one technique or one issue or the other, then more often than not, the standard advice of slow it right down is the only thing that seems to come out. You know, and perhaps this will be slow it down and play it with a metronome. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that slow practice isn't vital. It is. We all know that there are many occasions when slow practice is what is absolutely required. But that said, I'm not a believer that it's a panacea for every problem that we have on piano. There are times when slow practice will work and there are times when there are other things that we're able to do in our practice sessions that will help us get over problems. And I've sort of found myself on a little mini crusade to try and introduce people to as many different ways of practicing as I can, simply because these are things that I discovered when I came back to the piano, you know, just a few years ago. And I don't remember being taught many of these things when I was young. The simple fact is that most of us, especially adults, have very limited time to spend practicing the piano and therefore finding things that will give us the maximum bang for our buck are of course very important. One of the most frequent times that people are told to slow things right down is when they're looking for advice on how to speed something up. Now, I've released a video on this before, and I think there are other ways of trying to get faster than simply playing through something slowly. After all, if you've got somebody who wants to know how to run 100 meters faster, you're hardly going to say, go and take a walk. But of course, if somebody can't even run 100 meters, then the right place to start might well be to go for a walk. With anything, of course, that's tricky for us to play at the normal speed that it should go, one of the best places to start is to start slowly. We start slowly so we can get a good understanding of the music, so that we can start to work out a good fingering scheme that we can stick to, that we understand the dynamics, the way the piece works. It's also really useful when we're trying to work on voicing of chords and this kind of thing as well. And then even if we have been practicing, let's say, hands separately when we started learning something and we've got it up to a good speed hands separately, when we come to put it hands together, it might make a lot more sense to put it hands together quite slowly to start with while we get the two hands used to coordinating with each other. However, I still think that beyond this, if your aim is to be able to play something faster, then slow practice doesn't necessarily give you the biggest bang for your buck. Another scenario in which the standard advice of slow it right down and practice slowly is always given is if you're trying to deal with evenness. So you could have problems of evenness in scales or in passages within your pieces. Generally, evenness is caused probably by when the thumb passes under the fingers or the fingers pass over the thumb. And it's also when you're transitioning between black and white notes that can be little bumps in your playing. Rather than just thinking about slow practice, though, there are many other techniques that we can try out. For example, 
a good way of dealing with evenness in passages is to use the technique of accenting. And this was, in fact, something I saw Melanie Spanswick recommend in her Play It Again Piano Book 2 for Fur Elise. In that 30-second note section that's quite quick and can be quite difficult to keep nice and even, she recommends accenting alternate notes in different ways as you practice so that you build more evenness into the piece. Another way I've seen of using accents is if you've got something that says it's got groups of four notes in the way that it's written, then when you practice, first practice accent in the first note in every group of four, then accent the second note in every group of four, then the third, and then the fourth. I'm sure you get the idea. Then, of course, there's the other way of using rhythms while you practice. And strangely, I found that rhythms actually do sort of tie in with slow practice in that because effectively you're starting to pause on set notes as you play through the piece, you're basically slowing down the overall tempo, but you're still playing the majority of it at the faster tempo that you might need to achieve later. Another time people are very often told to slow something right down is when they're trying to get rid of isolated wrong notes. So, for example, if you keep stumbling on a Chopin Fioritura or a little run in a different type of piece, people say, ah, well, slow it right down and keep practicing it slowly. And again, I don't think that slowing something right down is the only way or even the best way necessarily of tackling this kind of problem. In fact, Josh Wright released an excellent video where he gives a potential solution to this kind of issue. So if you're working on a fioritura in Chopin and you're finding that it keeps stumbling at a given place or falling apart at a given note, then the first thing you do is find out where the problem is. So what is the first note that gives you an issue? Where is your first wrong note? And then, practice the short piece right up until before that note. So don't go to the note itself. Just practice the before that so you're nice and comfortable, 100% relaxed whilst you're doing it. Once you've done that, then add the wrong note itself, but of course the corrected version of that. And practice only to the actual point of the mistake that you were making before. And again, wait until you can do this really reliably, really comfortably before you go any further. Then you simply continue in the same vein by adding an extra note, practicing until again you're comfortable with this now slightly longer section, rinse and repeat until you get to the end. And this is a technique I've used a few times and it works very well in this kind of scenario. All of this said, of course, there are still many, many occasions when slow practice is definitely the best way to work on something, and I've not found anything that gives you a better result. As I said earlier, during the initial learning process, I found that there's nothing like slow practice for helping you to get an understanding of the music, to be able to work through, understand the dynamics, decide which fingering scheme to use. But then, oddly, I've also found that it's super useful when you can actually play something quite well as an aid to your memory. Because if you suddenly slow something right down without the music in front of you, what you're likely to find is that your fingers don't necessarily find all of the notes as you think that they probably should be able to do. Equally, Again, when you've got a piece to a good stage where you think you can play it well, slow practice seems really helpful in that it helps you to really work much harder on your dynamics or your voicing or all the tiny little subtleties that are there in the music. By slowing something right down at this stage, you're able to work on finer details because you're giving your ears more time to hear and your brain more time to process what you've heard. And I'm sure there are plenty of other examples of where slow practice is the real way forward. If you've got other examples, let me know in the comments. I'd be delighted to read them. 
Don't forget, of course, that you can actually combine any of these alternative techniques with slow practice. So you can use rhythms, but at a very slow tempo. You can use accents at a very slow tempo. There is, I think, a very simple rule that if you can't play something slowly, then you're not really going to be able to play it faster. However, I don't think then that you can necessarily apply that same rule in reverse. And this is why I've been so happy to find resources such as Josh Wright's YouTube channel and Graham Fitch's ebook piano practice series. Because whilst both of these will underline the importance of slow practice, and I'm not saying that it's not important and vital to practice in this way, they also give you a wealth of other things that you can try depending on the type of problem that you're trying to fix. If you're not already, please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Don't forget to click the little bell icon so that you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.